Hello, I brought you here to talk about the elephant in the room. For a sequential circuit, what happens when the input signal is held for too long? This happens all the time. An obvious example is this baby pressing a button on the museum display. Will the display restart its program thousands of times for thousands of clock cycles the baby holds down the button? Hopefully not. And even with a quick press, in human terms, it is unlikely for the input to be activated for just one clock cycle. We have skirted around this issue in our recent designs by using a manual switch for the clock. This was useful because it gave us enough time to set up the inputs just how we wanted them before we simulated a clock pulse. But this is unrealistic. In most computer applications, there will be an actual system clock serving as this signal, which is oscillating up and down regularly and quickly. Let's assume a relatively slow clock of 1 kHz. That would still require the input signal to update accurately in 1 1,000th of a second. Instead of hoping for input changes in sync with our clock, let's explicitly design to handle held input signals. Let's demonstrate this with a new design. Our goal is an air hockey scorekeeping device that will indicate when the game is over, with controls preventing one goal being counted multiple times. What follow-up questions would you ask to clarify this problem statement? Here are some good questions. And here are the answers or assumptions. Arbitrarily, we will make this a melee design using T flip-flops. We will monitor just one of the competitor scores, not both. There are four points needed to win the air hockey game. The one output signal from the circuit will be high only when the game is over, in other words, when four points are scored. The input signal will come from an already built lever that sends in a high signal when it is pressed, indicating that a goal has been scored. This lever is the heart of our need to control for a held input signal. It is likely that the hockey puck will press the lever for several milliseconds as it passes through. We do not want this to count for several points, but rather just one. The technique we'll use to ensure this is to design with intermediate states. Here is the start to a state diagram using intermediate states. There will be two states for each point total. The first state is just after a goal has been scored, while the lever is still pressed. The second state is after the lever is released and the circuit is waiting for the next goal. This legend up top explains the notation I'm using for the nodes. P2 means that two points have been scored. A means that we are in the first state where the lever is still pressed. This will change to B once the lever is released. This partial state diagram shows how this works. At the start of the game, the state should be P0B, meaning there are zero points scored, and we're waiting for the next goal. As long as no goal is scored, the circuit remains at this state, indicated by this zero arrow. But when a goal is scored, indicated by this one, the circuit moves to the next state. This state is called P1A. It tells us that one point has been scored and the lever is still being pressed. As long as the lever is still pressed, indicated by the one, the circuit remains in this intermediate state. But once the lever is released, indicated by the zero, the circuit moves to state P1B. Following these ideas allows us to continue the state diagram. Note that the state code follows a straight binary count. This is not required, but a sensible approach. Also note that the states labeled A are the intermediate states. They will not be held very long because the lever won't be pressed for very long. The stable states that will be used most of the time are labeled B. I have provided half of the node so far. On the follow along worksheet, try to complete the state diagram. Pause the video while you do. Here is the completed state diagram. 
Notice the regular cycle of state A, then B, then A, then B. The way to leave state A is to release the lever, thus the input is zero. The way to leave state B is to press the lever, thus the input is one. Notice the points increasing from zero through three and then back to zero. Why no state for four points, even though that is the winning score? Because this is a Mealy machine, which factors in the current input. So being at three points and currently scoring another point is the condition needed to output the high signal and end the game. The temptation at this point is to go back to the starting state, but the circuit does need to pass through an intermediate state first, here called P0A. Now our state diagram is complete, and we've already selected T flip-flops. So try the next state table on your own, pause the video. Here is my next state table. The thick cell borders really help us to read it. Three Q values are listed because of the 3-bit codes for our eight states. I abbreviated the Z column by writing just the lonely one. All other cells are zeros. Given this table, derive the necessary equations. Pause the video. Four equations are needed. Don't forget about the output Z. All of them are shown here. I also show the final circuit, which I will demonstrate shortly. But here I want to point out a couple things. First is that the strobed output flip-flop is required here because this is a Mealy machine. I tucked it a little lower just to save space. Second, I got nifty with the next state logic. You certainly could wire this in standard SOP equations, but I saved a couple gates by noticing that the T1 expression, Q0 and X prime, is found in both of the other T equations. So this AND gate provides Q0 and X prime. This next AND gate provides Q0 and X prime and Q1, the expression for T2. This OR gate sums Q0 and X prime with Q0 prime and X. Again, this is not required, but it is efficient. There is one big thing I want to show you in the simulator. We are using a true clock and not a manual switch. Because of the design with intermediate states, I can activate the input signal for a short time or a long time, and the state memory updates correctly. I'll take the score to three points. Recall that state P3B is state code 110, which is why this display says 6. Now I'll add one more point and the output signal flashes high for one clock cycle. The memory does not yet return to state 000. I first need to release the lever. The only limitation to the clock speed would be the propagation delays through the flip-flops and next state logic, which would be on the order of 50 nanoseconds. This equates to a clock frequency of 20 megahertz. This machine would be effective at a high speed like that, or at lower speeds. Although I saved this exploration of intermediate states for the end of our Mealy and More lessons, it is common practice, and you can see why. It helps us build a robust design that is less dependent on perfect laboratory conditions, like inputs changing in sync with the clock.